Humanities education gives us insight into everything. It gives us the skills to be able to think creatively and critically, to reason and to ask questions. These skills have become increasingly important in the world we live in today. Humanities also teaches us understanding, understanding into the human world. We learn about different cultures, art, and we learn understanding of accomplishments of the past and understand how the world we live in is affected by this. This gives us better understanding and clarity moving into the future. The humanities develop informed and critical citizens that are truly able to be part of this complex and diverse world. The Australian curriculum identifies the humanities into the following areas. Foundation to level two, the curriculum focus is on awareness of family history and community heritage. Through experimentation, practice and play, children in these levels use their interest in people and how things work to make sense of their world. This history curriculum enables students to foundation to level two to learn about their own social context of family, friends and school, and the significance of the past. They engage with the remains of the past, develop a concept of time as present, past and future, and through role play use their imagination to speculate about the lives of others in the past. From levels three to six, the curriculum focus is on local national history and the use of a range of different sources. Students draw on their growing experience of family, school and the wider community to develop their understanding of the world and their relationships to others, past and present. In these levels, students begin to better understand and appreciate different points of view and to develop an awareness of justice and fair play. This history curriculum seeks to target the distinct nature of learners in levels three to six by including content about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander societies, democratic concepts and rights, and the diversity of Australian society. In this way, students develop an understanding of the heritage of their community and of their ability to contribute to it. They become aware of similarities and differences between people and become more aware of diversity in the wider community as well as the concept of change over time. Assessment of learning. Assessment of learning is a formal assessment generally at the end of a unit of work. This type of assessment assists teachers in providing evidence of student learning and and influences assessment of achievement against outcomes and standards of the curriculum. Assessment for learning. Assessment for learning is when the teacher makes inferences about student progress to assist future relevance of their teaching. Assessment for learning is is frequent and continual. It can be both formal and informal. Assessment for learning will greatly assist teachers in and help shape their planning for learning. Assessment as learning. Assessment as learning occurs when students reflect and monitor their own progress to shape their own future learning goals. This type of assessment is constantly occurring and can be both formal and informal. Assessment for learning includes feedback from students' peers and student self-assessment. Celebrating students' work. On completion of work, all students will be given the opportunity to show, tell and present their work to their peers. This task aims to give students pride and true ownership of their own work. During this time, students will also be prompted to appreciate the work of their peers. Students will be asked to explain why another student work well on the particular task, why their work has a strong visual element, whilst also providing some critical criticism for their peers. During and after completion of the unit, student work will be displayed around the classroom and around the school. This provides an opportunity for peers, teachers, and families to witness student learning. As educators, there are a number of professional standards we must show competency in. Falling in line with the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people requirements within the ATSL grid. Standard 1.4 requires teachers to design and implement strategies for teaching Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students. Teachers must demonstrate broad knowledge and understanding of the impact of culture, cultural identity and linguistic background of the educational education of students from Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander background. 2.4 states we understand and respect Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to promote reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians. Teachers must demonstrate a broad knowledge of understanding of respect 
for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander histories, cultures and languages. At Year Level 3, within the Australian curriculum, the focus is on the diversity of people and places in their local communities and beyond, and how people participate in these communities. Students study how places are represented geographically and how communities express themselves through civic participation. The Australian curriculum states that at Year Level 3, opportunities are provided to learn about diversity within communities, including the county place of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people, and about the other communities, past and present. A great resource that can be used to help students gain a deeper understanding and appreciation of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander history and cultures is the Bunjalaka exhibition at the Melbourne Museum. This exhibition will allow students to tune into the topic of celebrating cultures. The Place and Culture School program offers students an insight into traditional Aboriginal culture in both the domains of art and history. Students will explore various types of traditional Aboriginal art through displays of various forms such as dot painting, weaving and woodwork. Students will gain an insight into the heritage of Australia and its historical content through the depiction of art, in particular through the observation of the brightly coloured artworks by the multi-talented collective Pichka Makinfellas. The Pichka Makinfellas are a group of the Pichka Makin Fellows are a men's group of writers and artists from Ballarat who use bold stamps of colour and patterns inspired by the environment, query history and southeastern mark making. In effect, by attending the Bunjalaka exhibition at the Melbourne Museum, students will be able to observe the foundation of Australia's multiculturalism. The exhibition will enable students to learn about the diversity of the first peoples of Victoria and their place in the complex history of the Australian continent. As educators, we must instruct our children regarding their Indigenous Australians, Torres Strait Islanders and non-Indigenous histories, existence and ways of life, especially before and after the arrival of the non-Indigenous people who came to Australia. By using Howard Gardner's multiple intelligence, we are able to utilise these different ways of learning to help aid the children. For example, teaching the children through the use of naturalistic intelligence and having the children visit original indigenous grounds. The kids can use their sense of smell and touch to explore and understand what it was like before the invasion of the white settlement. Aside from Gardner's multiple intelligence, he also stated that he wanted his children to understand the world, but not just because the world is fascinating and the human mind is curious. I want them to understand it so that they will be positioned to make it a better place. Knowledge is not the same as morality, but we need to understand if we are to avoid past mistakes and move in productive directions, an important part of that understanding is knowing who we are and what we can do. Teaching strategies in the classroom to help teach humanities and about the Indigenous people would be by discussion strategies, depending on the age group. A discussion between classmates can be a way to view others' opinions and express their own and learn from each other. Experimental learning, having the children focus on learning by doing. This may increase their knowledge by experimenting what the Indigenous people may have experienced through the ages. Inquiry guided or mobile learning for the students to research themselves about the Indigenous people. Or they can use the internet, or they can visit areas like Aboriginal landmarks or the Bunjilaka area in the Melbourne Museum. Case teaching is great for students to learn direct situations, real life problems and can develop logical problem solving. A great example of this can be an assessment related to the invasion of Australia and the what if is created for the students. For example, how could the white settlers live as one with the indigenous Australians who were here before them? The poll that relates directly to the way we want to teach humanities and about the indigenous Australians is poll number six, which states learning connects strongly with communities and practice beyond the classroom. Having children communicate with their surrounding neighbourhoods can help them understand what came before. With our humanities pedagogy, we wanted to think outside the box, help children get involved with the community, learn from real Indigenous people, and not just read it off the internet. As educators, we will do our best to make connections with the students and the land that we all live on. It is important to include many different perspectives in humanities education. Only viewing humanities education from one or few perspectives gives a narrow view and minimal points to critically analyse and evaluate what the student is learning. 
It is important to include resources in the school from a range of sources, both from Indigenous perspectives and English perspectives. Many of the books and histories written about Australia relegate Indigenous people to the sideline or completely disregard them and instead focus on Australia after English colonisation. We would like to invite local, cultural spokespeople and elders to talk to the students, as well as encouraging Indigenous and Torres Strait Islander students to explore their own background and history. We encourage the students to explore and research Australian Indigenous histories and cultures, as well as watching films and documentaries on the subject, and taking the students to local excursions to Indigenous sites and culturally significant areas. We would like the students to be able to find examples of Indigenous values and representations in media or online and explore how true these examples are, researching and understanding the difference between a perceived culture and the main underlying beliefs and values of that culture, including their histories and stories. We also take a whole school approach when addressing aspects of respect, relationships and reconciliation, and also look at ways that we can understand and investigate things like NAIDOC Week and Australia Day and the history behind it.